to you next time, guys. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, hey, how's it going? I didn't expect you. I was I was just finishing my Zoom. But uh, anyway, I'm Chris from Electronic Ghost Machine, and you're watching Beat on the Street. What's up, guys? I'm Michael Anthony of PopArtAv.com, and welcome to episode 15 of the Beat on the Street. If you've never seen this series before, I try to bring you some of the best music from indie musicians and record labels from around the world. Today's episode, I'll have a great interview with Alpha Crow Mayo, as well as an interview with Ashure. But first up, let's check out some new music videos from Echo Barrel, Zarina, and the Lightning Kids.
back to the show, guys. I hope you're enjoying everything so far. Without further ado, let's check out the interview with Alpha Chrome Yeah Yeah. Chichi, Chichi, get the yeah. Holy shit, it's ACY. Guys, let me introduce today ACY, Alpha Chrome Yeah. Thank you for being on the show today. How are you? Hey, dude. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's my total pleasure to be here. It's uh, warm as my heart. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. The, the pleasure is mine. This is really awesome to finally get to meet you, talk with you. I know we, I've been uh, following your music since 19th hole, I believe. <laughs> when, I first, when I first started listening. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. I know you're a huge supporter of not just my music, but music in general. And it, it means a lot to me, man. I, I appreciate that a lot. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so how would you describe your music to everybody? You know, it's a real tough one because when I first started putting out music as Alpha Chrome Yeo, like it was kind of more synth wave leaning and you know, still I still feel like I'm kind of of that world in some shape or form, you know. Um but what I do isn't easy to classify. <laughs> like sometimes it's kind of uh, kind of jazz fusion stuff, sometimes it's weird like body horror, almost black metal kind of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a horrible cold. Um so I, I, yeah, it's tough for me to describe. Um the phrase I've started using is far out exotic music because that kind of can mean anything but sounds kind of enticing, I hope. Um, so yeah, I have a tough time describing it, but far out seems about right. Uh, I always, I like the word exotic. It sounds, um, it sounds like it folds in elements from all sorts of places and that's what I try to do the most. That's really awesome. I think one of the one of the genres you mentioned was city pop and I like that a lot. The kind of... Oh yeah, but I'm a big, big fan of city pop. Uh, I, I know you are too. I like anything I can take from that world um, and try and make my own. Um, it, it makes me very happy, and it's what I listen to a lot myself. You know, I, mean, I listen to a lot of music because I know you do too. Uh, but yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of city pop, and uh, and especially with more, my more recent releases, uh, I tend to delve into that world a little. Bit. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, um, how did you um, get into music? Like, was it at an early age, or is something you picked up later? Yeah, I mean, I kind of always played music in some shape or form. I mean, I had like piano lessons and stuff in school. Uh, actually, not in school, like uh, from a, a lovely, a lovely woman by the road for my parents when I was really young. Um, but like, it was when my my, my parents have always been, always have been and continue to be huge supporters of what I do. They got me an electric guitar when I was like. 11 years old and that just blew my mind i mean even like just touching the strings and plugging this thing, thing in made it was amazing sound um i tried to play like an acoustic guitar before i was kind of shit on it i just couldn't, I couldn't get it uh, but this thing made sense uh, and that's when just um like my musical world just exploded i mean one of my first memories ever is seeing Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I used to watch that movie on repeat. I still watch it on repeat quite a bit. I always wanted to make sounds that sounded kind of like, kind of like that. I don't know what I do always does sound like that. I do have a cover out of, of like one of the big tracks that in time by Robbie Robb. I would say the most dramatic song ever written, but I digress. Um, so I, I, I started off wanting to make music like that, which I guess in hindsight, the Bill and Ted soundtrack, I love it, but it's kind of almost like Z-list, like uh, hair metal ballads and stuff. I think that's awesome. I still think it's awesome. I thought it was cool then. I think it's cool now. Um, but obviously, the music I make is kind of slightly different. Um, <coughs> when I first started doing that for Yeo stuff, like I, I originally got in synthesizers because I wanted to make um, like soundtracks to my own D and D games and stuff. Uh, and then it felt like a kind of a natural evolution to sort of like investigate more synth-based music I and mean, synth wave is a kind of huge part of that and stuff. And synthesizers still are a large part of what I do. Um, I'm surrounded by them right now, I don't see them, but there's, there's shit that puts them all around me. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I like music, I like making music all sorts of instruments. Uh, I mean, some of them I'm not bad at, some of them I am bad at. <laughs> and I like all kinds of instruments, um, and I always have. Um, so yeah, I've always been interested in music, but I guess I started, you know, I started doing that from Yale a few years ago, and that's kind of snowball and stuff, and it's now something I do. Um, like, I, I make lots of, like, sort of commissions and soundtracky kind of stuff, and I do that under the name of from Yale as well. So it started as something just for fun. It's still something I find extremely fun, and I love it, I do it, I enjoy it. Um, but it's a huge part of my life now, and, and that's great. I wouldn't have it any other way. That's awesome. That's really cool. 
I like how you came out with um, Dead Air. And that was, to me, anyway, that was like a big surprise. Like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like a lot darker than I'm, than I'm used to. <laughs> oh man, I, I had fun with that album. I mean, I, you know, I always kind of forget um, just exactly when things come out. So I'm going to open up my own band camp here. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> when did I put that out? That was, um, oh my God, yeah, quite a while ago. September, September last year. So I guess I was probably getting in kind of Halloween spirit and stuff. Yeah. I'm a spooky kid. I'm always in the Halloween spirit of fan, you know. I, 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 I live and breathe horror movies. And it was only a matter of time, I guess, before that kind of found its way into my music. I've had kind of slightly darker leaning stuff in the past. I had an album called Choke that came out in the first half of 2021. But then oh, okay. I just went all, all out, you know. Uh, it's just it's full of static and body horror and screams. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I recorded, I recorded lots of it in here. But, a little home studio. Um, most of my releases don't have too much in my vocals, so I do have some soundproofing here. But uh, you know, it wasn't quite ready. My neighbours weren't ready for the amount of screaming I was doing in this room. Uh, you know, I was shrieking the walls, sorry about choking on blood and stuff. All the cool things. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you like it, man. I I love that album. I love the the cool um, the artwork uh, by uh, Al Delgado, a Cuban artist who I feel work with on. Um, it's everything that I enjoyed making it so much. I mean, I find um, like horror and stuff extremely fun. I think horror can be really therapeutic as well. I mean, I mentioned that I've kind of had a flu all week. It's why I'm maybe a bit croaky. I don't know if you hear it or not. No. But when I, when I get kind of unwell, I dive into horror movies. I spent all week just watching, just like, um, watch a really good found footage, kind of a Japanese one called Cult, which was really cool. By the same dude who did Neroi and stuff. Um, it's something I, I find horror exciting, but I also find it kind of soothing and cosy. I don't think I'm alone in that. You know, there's something amazing about horror that when you kind of immerse yourself in something kind of horrible, um, it's not a sad point of thing. I'm not saying it makes me feel better about my world, but you know, it's it's there's something about it. There's just something really cosy and weirdly common. Um, so I, I, I liked sort of putting out music on Dead Air that was steeped in horror, but I kind of mixed it with sort of slightly kind of chill wavy stuff. And there's a few jazz tracks on and things. Um, yeah, I just um, I, I like finding weird, weird, weird wormholes and going down them. <laughs> I know. I think it was awesome. It was really cool. I'm, I'm My heart. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of horror movies from like the 80s and 90s. Like, I don't know if I have any from recent i don't even know i'd have to you know i i I would be exactly the same um there was a time where i was kind of thinking you know i couldn't even name a horror movie past kind of like mid 90s for a while that i like these days i'm kind of getting something more into kind of um like early 2000s horror and stuff but still i mean it's hard to get past the 80s and 90s for great great years for horror and stuff then even going back a bit further i love all the kind of kitschy like herschel gordon lewis like gore movies and everything uh, from the 60s um, really trippy and fun and stuff. No, um, but yeah, the 80s and 90s, I, I, I'm with you there, you know, that, that's that's the golden age as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I remember growing up getting the magazines, we had, I uh, can't think of the name of them now, but there was like a ton of magazines like just for that, you know, I had the oh, fake arm, I used to have the fake arm, I used to hide it in my refrigerator, <laughs> and I scared people. <laughs> Oh, dude, yeah, I love a good fake body part. That's, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, endless fun. Yep. Yeah, cool. <laughs> We're the same, you and I. <laughs> so, um, where did you where did you grow up? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I grew up just outside of Belfast, Northern Ireland, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, I was born in a kind of small town, like an hour away from Belfast. Um, I live kind of in the... Not quite the countryside, not quite the suburbs, but outside of Belfast, uh, it's up in the hills right now, and uh, I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I travel I travel about a bit, not as much as I would like to, and hopefully, you know, the more the world opens up I'll, uh, after like post pandemic and stuff, I get a little bit more traveling. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love it here. It's a place that um, sometimes, if you mention you're from Northern Ireland, people are kind of picturing. Which I guess it was at one point, but it's not like a war-torn kind of battlefield currently, you know. But it's a place that's had its troubles, but feels like it's on the up and up anyway. So it's a an interesting, in some ways backwards, in some ways forward-looking place to live. Um, but I'm, I'm happy here, man. It's uh, it's my home. 
Yeah, I, I definitely one country I definitely want to visit. It's always been hey, it's really cool. Welcome on any time, man. I'll, I'll cook you dinner. You know, we'll have some fun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> now you mentioned too. You you met York, right? I remember you saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really cool. I did. <laughs> she was doing a show in um, Belfast. God, when would this been? Shit, I'm talking like more than 10 years ago anyway, maybe like 12 years ago, she was doing a show and I think it was the Waterfront Ball here. I didn't make uh-huh. it to the show uh, because I was working. I was working in a comic book shop at the time. Oh, okay. York was in, like shopping for Pokemon toys with her kid. So me and my friend Scotty, we uh, got to sell her a couple of Pokemon toys. It's cool, actually. The comic shop is a place, we don't get an awful lot of celebs here. We get some, uh, but you know, the comic book shop was always a place where we would attract like sort of some famous people and stuff. I was in there like, I, like I still go there. I still love comics. I still shop there and stuff. I was in there a couple of years back. And my mate who works there, he was like, "Oh man, you should have been here like three minutes ago." Alice Cooper was just here. Oh <laughs> so I know it's yeah, kind of sad. Like, didn't get to meet Alice Cooper there. But yeah, I did meet York and uh, a few other cool celebs uh, buying their comics. And um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't pass her. You know, I didn't ask her. You know, course, what, what her favorite Pokemon is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a cool time. Yeah, I, I would have been in shock for about five, ten minutes just seeing her, you know, first time <laughs> yeah. seeing her in real life. <laughs> it was strange. It was, it was, um, it was bizarre. Cause, like, my friends were like, oh, shit, is that Bjork over there? And we kind of frantically Googled to see if she was in time that life. So I was like, oh, God, yeah, it totally is. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a fun time. I, I'm, a, I'm a dude who doesn't tend to get too, like, starstruck. But I have, like, a few celebrities that I would just lose my mind if I met. Uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is definitely one. Like I just, I, I have literal dreams about meeting Arnold Schwarzenegger. I just know that my mind would, would just pop. <laughs> so maybe someday that will happen. Really if I got sell, if I got to sell Arnold some comics now, even though I don't work in the comic store anymore, he can come round and, and read my comics with me. We'll, we'll have a good time. We'll smoke a cigar. I don't know. <laughs> <It'll be fun. laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So what what uh what music are you currently listening to? Anything that stands out that you listen? To? Oh, what am I listening to? Um, I'm listening to well, we talked about city pop earlier. Uh, I'm listening to city pop always. I mean, um, oh my god, I'm high. Uh, oh yeah, I'm just listening to Tiara. Minako Yoshida, I've listened to a lot of it at the minute. She's got this cool album called Monochrome. It's kind of city pop. So, something I like about city pop is that it folds in, like I try to do, it folds in stuff from like from all kinds of places. So if you listen to like, Variety by Maria Takeuchi, um, the seminal city pop album, but it's got like rock and roll and country art and stuff, which I really like, you know. Uh, it's called Variety because I guess it, it, it is a variety. Um, so I like it when the city pop albums do that. That, that one I mentioned there, Monochrome. Uh, by Monaco Yoshida. Monaco Yoshida, sorry, let's double check it in. Um, it's incredible, it's really kind of sultry and soulful and stuff. I, I, I like that very much. Uh, and I, I can't permanently listen to loads of jazz and the minute stuff. Again, some Japanese stuff, like uh, Ryo Fukui, uh, Takanaka and stuff. Um, but I listen to a lot, man. I mean, I, I listened to um, the Pharaoh Sanders last night before bed and stuff. Oh, you know what? Actually, what I've been listening to all day today is um, Vituals by uh, Sky Yamaha, who you might be familiar with. Uh, she's okay. a, a kind of, uh, she's from, well, I was going to say Austin, it's not Austin, I think she's from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Arizona, anyway. And she makes this incredible kind of, um, uh, kind of, it, it, it's a, again a huge variety of music. Sometimes it's kind of chill wave leaning, almost vapor wavy. Sometimes it's kind of more world music and stuff. She, she's got a lot of like live flute on it and everything. I got her most recent album, uh, Rituals, in the car at the minute. Um, I think there might even be some physical copies of it left. I think there was like a very small run. So I've been listening to that all day. Uh, I took it on a trip with me around like, the north coast of Ireland recently. And I took it on a jaunt to go and look after my mate's cat earlier, uh, which was you know, less kind of thrilling and ethereal, but it still uh, was great. I was even listening to it in the hardware store this afternoon while I was shopping for bits of wood. So yeah, that's been in my brain a lot, and I, I recommend it very ample. That's really cool. I think I met, uh, you mentioned that on uh, social media as well too. I think I remember. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool album. Uh, Everything this guy Yamaha does is, is incredible and I recommend checking out her work very much. Uh, That's really cool. So I, I know you from um, Twitter. Um, what, what other social media are you on platforms? You know, I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter. I killed off my Facebook a while back because I just didn't like it. Um, yeah. 
Uh, I'm on Instagram. I don't really use it too much, um, but I'm on there, you know. Uh, Twitter is kind of my social media home. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it feels like, um, you know, I guess my, my, my online trust, I kind of like in my music. I like to be able to kind of have, talk about a variety of stuff. I like to talk about the music I'm doing and share bits of it. You know, I also like to post whatever I'm kind of decking around in the kitchen and making food and just... Uh, Twitter seems to lend itself to kind of um, to post on whatever I want. You know, if you're on Instagram or whatever, I think you kind of to have success on it. Um, I think you have to kind of almost have a niche, I guess. I mean, not that you really get percent about success on social media, um, but uh, you know, it's nice when people enjoy the things that you share. Um, I, I think Twitter gives me the best kind of place to do that. Um, a lot of people can tell me to join TikTok. Um, I make a lot of videos, I share videos and stuff. I know it's like a, a video heavy platform. I don't know, my wife told me if I do that, like, it's, it's creepy because it's a place, like, it's just full of, like, in her, in her mind, like, it's just, it's for teenagers or something. Like, yeah. uh, so I don't know if that's right or not. I, I don't know if I'm too old for TikTok. Um, but I'm going to be able to check it out. I don't know. But yeah, if people can check me out on Twitter, that's probably the best place to get a look inside my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree with the social. It's definitely out of hand. Like, I can't. I try to you know, do what I can on where I can, but it's, it's definitely too much. <laughs> it's a lot, man. It's, it's a lot. I enjoy, I enjoy Twitter. That's why I post on Twitter. I, I like it, you know. Um, yeah. I wouldn't post stuff if I didn't like it. Yeah. Facebook doesn't like to kill it. Instagram, eh, it's okay, but I just, you know, Twitter feels more homely to me. I, I agree. I'm, I'm the same way. Definitely. <laughs> So your music is on Bandcamp. Um, what what other uh, platforms? I mean, it's all the big ones. It's on sort of Spotify and Apple and, and, and what have you. But Bandcamp is always kind of my musical home. Um, I mean, uh, as you know yourself, it's such a great place to support artists and and they get. A, we, I should say, as artists, or so that sounds like an asshole thing to say. We, as artists, <laughs> people who make music and release it on Bandcamp get a far better kind of deal, basically, if anyone decides to support it by buying music on there, like your good self. Uh, uh, it's very, very much appreciated. So, to try and kind of, um, as a small fuck you at my end, I always try to include extra stuff on Bandcamp that you can't get anywhere else. So, I include like, extra artwork and liner notes and extra tracks. I've got like weird podcasts on there and stuff. I've got like a I've got like a cookery themed album which you can listen to on Spotify, but if you get it on Bandcamp, you get like a, a legit PDF recipe book of recipes by me and my family. Um, so it, yeah, it's definitely. But again, it's my musical home and it's a great place that, um, like Twitter, I guess it's, it's nice that I can talk to people who like my music through there, but they can also talk to me and it's cool. It feels like there's a bit of more community there and. Um, uh, it's great. I just I just like being able to kind of be in touch with people who dig what I do and to in some way kind of you know thank people for their very generous support, which is always appreciated. Um, so yeah, uh, Bandcamp uh, is is the best place to check me and the buying music always. Awesome. I remember the um, the performance you had on there too, the live event. Oh yeah, of course. Oh man. Well, thank you so much for for, for, for being there. Um, the um, yeah, I totally forgot. There's a whole thing that again, you know, you could fold in my live live stream shows there and sell merch and stuff. Doing the live stream show there, Black Tie Blowout, last year, last, about this time last year, I think. Um, uh, it was so much fun. You know, I, I did it from this little studio here, like with a green screen. Um, and you know, it, it might seem dorky to say that was one of the most fun nights of my entire life. You know, dressed up in the top doing this ridiculous live so I just having a blast uh, because just you know live gigs are brilliant in person but then there's some kind of magic about streaming gigs because you have people from all over the world having fun like in the chat and stuff and I watched the back all I wanted for that show was for, for I wanted to be a big party I knew it was less about what I was doing and more about the people watching and having fun and, and watching it back and reading through the chat and seeing people um, like partying down and, and stuff it was it was so good. It made me feel so great. Um, yeah, that was a cool night, man. Thanks for bringing it up. Oh, <laughs> it was sure, a, it was yeah. a cool time. The, the chat was awesome. I think we, we we were talking about how awesome it was. You went from like Mortal Kombat to like Andrew WK. <laughs> <laughs> Two of my favorites right there. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was obsessed yeah. with Andrew WK like in school. Um, I met Andrew WK a few times since then. Um, yeah, actually, I got a bit sore stuck meeting Andrew WK. Because I, I was obsessed with him in school. I think I like, uh, 
uh, I invited them around to my house to play Dungeons and Dragons, which didn't happen. He did say maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah, that, Andrew W. K. is a cool guy. Um, yeah, that is good, dude. That's really cool. So, um, before we wrap up, um, do you have anything else planned for the rest of 2022? Yeah, I mean, I usually release multiple albums every year and have done since I kind of started. At the minute, I haven't really put much out in the past few months. It's because I'm busy doing a lot of kind of behind the scenes stuff. So I am working on the next Alpha from Yeo album. Um, uh, there'll be more to share on that soon. Like it's partly finished, but there's more stuff to do. And, uh, I've, I've got this really cool artist, uh, Amanda Ray, who's worked, I've uh, completed the artwork for it, which is gorgeous. Uh, and I'm so excited about releasing it. Um, but I have other stuff going on too. I've been, I'm working on a lot more kind of commissiony stuff at the minute. They're kind of soundtracks for radio shows, and podcasts and things. But something I'm so excited about is that I am currently working on uh, more than one video game soundtrack. There's one particular soundtrack that I'm, I'm very heavily involved with. Uh, I can't really talk about it anymore because I've signed like uh, all kinds of NDAs and stuff. Of course, of course. I cannot wait to talk more about it though. I am beyond excited about it. It's with just a really cool company. It's, the game is, it feels like it was made just for me. <laughs> Even though I know obviously it's not, uh, I think it will have mass appeal. <laughs> but it is something that really appeals to all of my interests. I'm so excited to be involved with it. Um, uh, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll tell you more about it as soon as I can. Um, oh, course, I'm awesome. very excited. So that's hopefully really in weird. the next few months I can spill a bit more. I can spill more tea about that in a few months. Awesome. Very cool. Um, again, thank you. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, hey, we'll thanks for having me. Of course. We'll definitely do, the, uh, do it again in the future as well, too. Dude, my pleasure. And thanks to anyone who's checked this out. You're the best. He's got a French martini and a long stem glass. Maraschino cherry for that touch of class. Wish I could take my eyes off that ass, but I can't. He pulls a thick cohiba from his inside pocket. Matches and cutter, you know he's got it. Synthesizer and a silk bow tie. Holy shit, it's ACY. Page me, any day or night. Page me, when the feeling's right. Page me, and I'll come running into your arms, baby. Just page me, put those digits in. Page me, let the text begin. Page me. Page me, page me, oh, me now. I love that sort of the pals. I mean, who doesn't? When I see you, the feeling is insane. Strutting around like your name is Niles Crane. Oh, I think I'm going to need a sherry. Chrome, yay on stage, dance floor jumping, bodies are writhing and beats are pumping, bombs, like a funky minesweeper, go ahead, just grab that beeper and page me, any day or night, page me, when the feeling's right, page me, and I'll come running, into your arms, baby, just page me, put those digits in, page me, let the text begin, page me, page me, page me, oh, me now. Just want to say a big thank you to ACY for that awesome interview and taking the time to be on the show. Also, don't forget to check out his new album, Private Garden on Bandcamp, that just recently came out. Next up, let's check out some new music videos, followed by an interview with Ashure.
this way down, but they come this here, man. Me not understand how some man on a gay man with so much gal in a the world on no fit take one. Me love the gal them straight from day one. Lady, if you want a baby, we can try and make one. No discrimination. Chinese, white, black, or Asian, British or Jamaican, keep your heads high on no fit, stay strong. We love or no? Mister, keep your heads high on no fit, stay strong. We love ya. Yeah. Lift up, blast up, shirt up, pants up, bra up, dance up, naked in the dance hall, space box, space box. Lift up, blast up, shirt up, pants up, bra up, dance up, naked in the dance hall, space box. guys with me today i have a survey a survey did i say that right i'm sorry i apologize yep <laughs> okay yep <laughs> welcome to the show thank you for taking the time to come on the show today thank you so much for having me of course so um how would you describe your music to everyone probably dark gothy kind of witchy in a sense yeah depressing maybe <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> a little bit um how would you uh how did you get into music was this something like you've listened to before like uh in that genre or was it something that you just wanted to create because that's what you like um I th- it was a mixture of both to be honest um i always listened to things like the cure and depeche mode uh, oh, okay. Sister of mercy kind of darker gothier bands like that um and I knew if I was to make music, I'd want to go down that kind of route. But I was always hooked on synths and keyboards. So I wanted to kind of make a mesh of those, to be honest. Mm-hmm. A goth kind of synth type thing. Awesome. <laughs> pretty much. No, it's so, really cool. Yeah, that's pretty much just the cure. Just a lot of the cure. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I see. So a lot of um, the music I, I listened to of yours was from QL Horror. I hope I said mm-hmm. that, pronounced that right. Um, <laughs> so that that's around the same genre, I believe, right? Around the yeah. same. Okay. Yeah. And you were the the vocalist on that, or you also produced the music, came out with the music. Um, a bit of both. Although my friend does more of the production on that. Um, so it's a bit cheerier than my solo stuff oh, okay. because he listens to a lot more kind of pop punk things like that. Gotcha. Um, so we tried to interpret both of our music tastes, which are very different, into that, and that's what we came up with, very much. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. So mm. um, where, where did you grow up? Um, I was around the Glasgow area in Scotland. Oh, okay. Um, and now I live in a nice little coastal town in Scotland, nice and quiet. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I could tell you have a, the accent. Oh, that's always at the end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so um you just came out with artificial anxiety i believe on may 5th i believe right yep yep what, what was it like um and that, that's your solo project i believe mm-hmm. okay what was it like coming out with that like what was the creative process like it was it was kind of based on a lot of what was going on in my life at the time um kind of mental health and things like that sorry to be all <laughs> depressing like that but it was my way of kind of channeling everything that was happening and mm-hmm. um, so I'd come home and just bash out a song um, and then get it all out just kind of let it all flood out of me um, and it was really cathartic it was a really cathartic experience to make it and um, yeah so basically each song kind of flows through what I was feeling at the time Oh, okay. um, and I find it a very good way of emotion. It's a good emotional breakthrough. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a great album. I, I like 
definitely uh, enjoy listening to it. It's oh, really thank cool. you so much. Oh, of course. Thank you. <laughs> um, how did you uh, like originally get into music? Like, was it at a young age or something you you picked up uh, later? Um, listening to music obviously was something that my mom and dad had going on all the time. We had my mum who listened to things like Fleetwood Mac and Whitney Houston, um, David Bowie, and then my dad who was into Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. Um, awesome. So basically I just would listen to stuff like that all the time. And then when I hit about 18, I thought I want to make music. Um, so my friend taught me how to play the guitar a bit. So I would write through that. And then just this year, just taught myself how to produce mix and master and things like that um, and it's, it's been great self-taught just pure self-taught really um, and awesome. that's that's why it's probably not 100 <laughs> percent but <laughs> did the best i could oh <laughs> uh, no it sounds it sounds great i mean it sounds like you know definitely um i like it you know i think it's awesome <laughs> it's really cool thank you um so what was it like a certain uh instrument you liked playing was it like, um, or like what other instruments do you play? Um, just a bit of guitar and then a bit of keyboard. I wouldn't by any okay. means say that I'm fluent in them. Oh, okay. But I can find my way around one. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, keyboard was something I, I picked up too. I played at an early age. That was my mm. one regret that I, I didn't master it, or I can't say master it, but that I didn't uh, keep going with it. That was my one regret I have. But I'll probably pick well, it up still one day. Time. Again. Yeah, yeah, there's still time. <laughs> it's always been my, my favorite instrument for sure. Mm -hmm. Um so what what kind of music are you currently listening to? Do you have any favorites at the time? Um right now, uh, do you know the band Alexis on Fire? Um I've, I've heard of them, but I haven't listened to much of them yet. Well, they've just they went on hiatus for a long time, so they've just released new stuff. So I've been pretty fixated on that. And then awesome. the two albums that I'm still stuck on are Psychopath by Coffin Dragger, yes, and Tortured Tortured Waters by Deadly. Oh, okay, awesome. That's really mm -hmm. cool. We're um, so I found a lot of your your music on Bandcamp. Um, mm -hmm. Where else do you have your music on all, on other platforms? Um, it's on everything any major platform that I could think of. Um, it's also on YouTube and Spotify and things like that. Um, Spotify is the main one that I use, to be honest. Oh, okay. Because um, I'm the type of person, don't, you don't have to buy my music at all. Just, just that, if you just listen to it, I'm happy, honestly. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I always like Bandcamp. It's, uh, mm. I, I used to be a big iTunes, uh, you know, for a long time. But I think Bandcamp mm -hmm. delves a little deeper, you know, gives you the, the genres, you know, more specific genres, things like that as well, too. Yeah, I like and the artists could kind of personalize their space and stuff so you can get yeah. to know them a lot better. Yeah, yeah, definitely really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so on social media, where, where are you on? I see you on Twitter. Are you also on mm -hmm. any others? Um, just Twitter on, and Instagram. Oh, uh, okay. Those are the, my two mains, yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, awesome. I will make a Facebook one day. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many. There's too, way too many oh, to yeah. keep up with. It's it's like Absolutely. another job some days. <laughs> and social media is, is oh draining sometimes. <laughs> yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely agree. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put all your links. Uh, it's just where everyone can find your music, your socials. I'll put all the links in the video description as well too. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, so before we wrap up, um, did you have any? Anything else planned for the rest of the year, 2022? Um, I think for the next half a year that's left, <laughs> I'm going to release a few more singles and then hopefully have an album ready for the start of next year. Okay, awesome. That that's the, the plans. Um, and I would like to at least some point maybe fire out a video. Oh, so really? So I've got some plans for one. <laughs> that's awesome. That always sounds good. So right now, I just want to say thank you. I want to uh, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for chatting with me. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to play one of your tracks right now as well, too, so everyone can hear. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
thank you to Ashore for taking the time to be on the show. It was great chatting with you. Hope you enjoyed everything. Also, don't forget to check her out on Bandcamp in the links below. Next up is some more music videos that I hope you'll enjoy. I don't think so. If you could get me those TPS reports today, that'd be great. Well, why are you dressed like that? It's Rococo Friday. Oh, I forgot. Okay. I'll be right back.
Okay, guys, it's almost that time to wrap up the show. Also, don't forget to check out popartev.com. That's my website. We can read up on some interviews and some of the best musicians and record labels from around the world. Hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next time on episode 16 by the end of this month, and I'll see you next time.